Hi folks, Urgent here. This is the third video in my series about avian flu and the risk of a pandemic. In this video I'll offer suggestions for protecting yourself against the threat of a pandemic. Let me begin by talking about transmissibility. Different viruses have different characteristics. The tuberculosis virus, for example, can survive in the air for quite a long time, so it's capable of circulating in a building ventilation system to produce infection. But influenza viruses are less survivable in air. Most of the risk of infection comes from being within six feet of an infected person, or touching an infected person, or being exposed to an infected person's bodily fluids. Therefore, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control do not recommend the use of air pressure barriers to isolate infected persons. It's enough to put them in a separate room and to wear appropriate protective clothing and respirators. The virus gains entry into the body primarily through the respiratory tract though it's considered possible that the virus may be able to enter through the eyes. So emergency and healthcare workers will be wearing goggles or hoods, respirators, and protective clothing and gloves. Simple surgical masks are not considered to be adequate to block transmission of the influenza virus. However, if respirators are not available in sufficient quantities, Surgical masks will be used by emergency and healthcare workers because they provide better protection than none at all. There are many types of respirators which provide adequate protection, but they all have one thing in common. You need training to use them effectively. The CDC link I furnished in the text box has some information about respirators if you want to click around the site and find it. I'm not going to mess around with respirators myself. The people who need them most are emergency and healthcare workers. But if your employer wants you to work during a pandemic, you should bring up the subject of protective gear and find out what they plan to do. If they're going to use respirators and protective clothing, there should be some training for workers who will wear them. Until a human-to-human -human transmissible strain emerges, the primary threat of avian flu comes from contact with birds. If you work in the poultry industry, you already know all about the precautions workers in that industry are taking. If you're involved in bird banding, I think you'll need to acquire a respirator and protective clothing as well as training in how to use them. For the rest of us, we need to properly handle and cook poultry and eggs. This means washing your hands and cleaning up utensils which have come into contact with raw bird flesh. It also means fully cooking foods, especially poultry and eggs. Cooking kills the virus. Don't drink water from open sources where birds have been, unless you've boiled the water. If you're on a wilderness trip, don't settle for one of those water filtration devices. Boil your water. If a pandemic hits, you'll receive instructions from your government about what to do. In some cases, it will be necessary to avoid contact with people. That means you better have a good stockpile of food and necessities at home so you can survive if there are difficulties obtaining essential food and supplies. In a pandemic, we'll be seeing quarantines as health officials attempt to limit the spread of the disease. Freedom of movement may be curtailed. Some food deliveries may be organized by governments. But remember the lessons of Katrina? Governments are not always effective. Building up your own stockpile of foods and necessities will be a minor nuisance if a pandemic doesn't happen. If a pandemic does happen, you'll be very glad you 
planned ahead. In a pandemic-inspired economic slump, a lot of people could lose jobs, and not many companies will be hiring. You'll need to know how you will survive. Take stock of your resources. If you're able to produce something at home that people will need during the pandemic, you'll have something to trade. Having a vegetable garden would be especially valuable. You can talk to your employer and see if they have a plan for responding to a pandemic. Will they close? Will employees be able to telecommute? How will they reduce risk if people had to continue to work? Make sure there is a plan and that everyone knows what it is. And you can talk to your doctor about it. What are her plans for dealing with sick people if a pandemic is occurring? How will medical services be delivered to people safely? Healthcare workers will probably have respirators and protective clothing. What about patients in waiting rooms or emergency rooms at hospitals? What measures will be taken to prevent infection in such places? If a pandemic hits, schools and daycare centers may close. If you have kids, you may find them stuck at home. You'll need to make sure you have a plan for that, someone to watch them, activities to keep them busy. You want to keep them away from other kids until it's judged safe again. Finally, what do you do if you get sick? Influenza is a disease of the respiratory system, so it's your lungs, bronchial tubes, throat, and sinuses that are most likely to show symptoms. You'll probably cough a lot. If you become sick during a pandemic and think it might be the flu, call emergency services and inform them, then comply with their instructions. Whatever you do, if you feel sick during a pandemic, don't ignore it and don't go to work or go to public spaces. Get on the phone and call emergency services. If a pandemic does happen, it's hard to say how long it will last or how severe it will be. The Spanish flu pandemic was over within two years. Within individual communities, it typically appeared in a wave lasting several weeks, followed by a lull, followed by another wave repeated over the course of about 18 months. The first wave was usually the worst. If you have a couple of months worth of stockpiled food and essentials, you should be in pretty good shape to ride out the worst times of danger. Do I think a pandemic will hit soon? I'll go on record as saying no. I think we'll dodge the bullet by containing any outbreaks of human transmissible viruses before they get loose. But I'm not absolutely certain. Neither are the experts. The consequences of it happening when we're not prepared could be pretty awful. Peace of mind doesn't come from burying your head in the sand. It comes from understanding, planning, preparation. So take a bit of time and think it through. Lay in a modest stockpile. Make contingency plans. Once you've done that, you'll have one less thing to worry about. And if a pandemic comes, you'll be ready. Thank you for watching.